Today is about how much Lambda actually costs. The AWS website gives some high level examples, but still leaves you wondering how much your code actually costs to run. Let's get into it. Price is often one of the most important factors in a project, and the peace of mind that comes from knowing your prices is immeasurable and fairly simple on Lambda. The AWS website gives some high-level examples on pricing, but doesn't actually dive into what it'll actually cost you. For instance, this guy in example one is only paying $18 for 3 million requests. That seems pretty reasonable, but how do you figure out if you need 512 megabytes of storage? What if you need more or less? What if my code runs for 30 seconds, then what happens? Today we'll learn how to estimate Lambda pricing by walking through a real world example from my own website, GrubGuide. It's easier than you might think. I run a website called GrubGuide. The site delivers delightful, fast, and personal restaurant suggestions that make tourists stay in my hometown of Bend, Oregon awesome. The site is built on AWS and uses Lambda to run an algorithm that selects the perfect restaurant based on users' preferences. I'll link an article explaining how GrubGuide is architected in the description. Let's estimate the cost of running the algorithm on Lambda for 10,000 visitors per month. I won't share the secret sauce of the website, but to give you an idea of the amount of code, the algorithm has an O of 1 runtime. In other words, there aren't any loops. It's about 200 lines of code and makes two database calls. To solve for the cost, we need to know three things. The number of times the code will run, the amount of memory needed, and the time it will take to run. We know the function will run 10,000 times. Boom, one third of the way there. The best way to get the other two numbers is to upload and run the code on Lambda. Because I'm using AWS Amplify to make a new function, in the terminal I type amplify add function. Write the code, then from the terminal run amplify push to send it to the cloud. Once it's pushed, I can run the function from my website or from API Gateway. Run the code at least 10 times, then go to the Lambda console. Great, now that you're in the Lambda console, let's head over to the function that we're monitoring. Uh, we're gonna go hit monitor and we should see some recent runs of this function. Here we have them. Um, uh, for me, uh, last three hours is the duration. You could also do it at one, that wouldn't make a difference. But we're gonna head over to the view and metrics tab and this is going to take us over to CloudWatch to get a little bit of a deeper insight into our Lambda function. All right, and so remember we're going for the average runtime of this function. Um, right now it's showing us in one minute intervals. Uh, we're going to want to switch that to 15 minutes or one hour. I'm going to do one hour just to be safe to make sure that we're getting all of our runs in there. I'm going to head over to graph options. I'm going to hit number and there we have on the left our duration minimum, maximum, and average. Uh, so for me, it was 935 milliseconds. For you, it could be different, uh, but whatever it is, make sure you write that down. Great, that was the hard part. Now let's get the memory used. We're gonna head over on the left side panel and click Insights. And when that pops up, we're gonna select our log group, which is just the name of our Lambda function. We're gonna click that. We're gonna make sure our time is okay. Uh, for me, I did all my tests within an hour, so that's going to be good. And we're going to head over to this query section, delete what's in there, and then paste in the query that I have in the description. And what this is going to do is this is going to run a little report, and within it, it's going to tell us what our average memory used is. And so you can see for my function, it is 99.7 megabytes, uh, and the max is 102. Uh, this is pretty consistent. Um, and for my use case, 128 is perfect. Uh, it's mostly being used and it has a little bit of wiggle room just in case anything goes wrong. See, it's not so bad. Now that we know our memory, execution time, and number of requests, we can calculate the cost. Cost is the number of requests times the GBS per run multiplied by the dollars per GBS. To calculate GBS, we multiply average memory and average runtime that we found just a second ago. Put those numbers together and we come out with about two cents per month. Not bad. However, this number of requests and GBS is well within the free tier, so this setup won't even cost us a penny. Remember, this calculation is all about finding the right service for the job. Let's compare costs with EC2 real quick. 
we'll assume we're using on-demand instances running for 12 hours per day. I chose on-demand because the visitors unpredictably come to GrubGuide. Our cost is roughly 12 hours per day at $0.0058 per hour times 30 days for a grand total of $2.09. Today, neither Lambda or EC2 will break the bank, but Lambda is the obvious choice. While these numbers seem small now, knowing how to go through these steps can save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars per month for a large scale workload. Boom, now you can be confident in your Lambda costs. But in the back of our minds, you and I both know that we're human. We forget birthdays, we push bugs into production, and we forget to carry the one. And that's why AWS created budgets. Budgets let you set the max amount you're willing to spend on the Lambda function and they'll alert you if you're getting close to the threshold. In order to set up budgets, we have to go to the function and add a tag. So we're gonna click on our function, go under function configuration, manage tags. For me, I've already set up a tag with name and the function name. Um, I prefer name just cause it's really easy to remember the function by. And then you'll click save. Um, now, by default, these tags won't show up in the budgets and you have to go over to billing and enable that tag as a billable tag. And so we're going over to billing right now and then we're going to go over to cost allocation tags. And this is what's going to allow it to show up in budget. And so you can see right now I have name active. Uh, if it is not active currently, uh, as your tag probably won't be, you want to click on it and then you'll go up to activate. Uh, just a heads up, this will take about 24 hours to uh, update and so, you know, don't expect it to work right away. I know for me it took the full 24 hours um, and I was wondering why it wasn't working, um, but it really did take that full 24 hours. And so after that 24 hours is up, you're going to head over to budgets and we're going to create our budget. Great, so we're going to create a new budget, we're going to make a cost budget. Um, we're going to call this submit form dev lambda budget. Great. This will be a monthly recurring budget fixed. Uh, for me, I'm going to start it at $10. That seems more than enough. Um, and that $12.30, that's my whole AWS spending right there. Um, not just that lambda function. And so now here is where the magic of filtering comes in. And so we're going to go down, let's just search for Lambda. That's going to be the service for our budget. And then we're going to head down to this tag section and you can see name showed up there. Uh, if it hasn't populated yet, if it hasn't been 24 hours, this will not appear. Um, so then I'm going to click name, there's submit form dev, and I'm going to apply the filter. Great, so now that filter is applied and I'm going to head over to configure thresholds. Um, define your threshold, actual cost. Great, notifications, I can enter my email in there. Um, and so now I'll end up getting an email each time uh, that I get within 80% of that budget amount, which uh, is great just to know like, hey Dylan, you're getting close. Oh, let's put 80, but uh, not over it yet. And that way I could assess what I want to do with the Lambda function instead of having it just shut off and my website stop working. Maybe I'm getting a ton of visitors and I do want to go over that amount, or maybe I'm not, maybe something's broken and then I do want to just stop it right there. Um, so that's what this uh, threshold is for. Great, and so now we're gonna confirm our budget, kinda like when you go shopping, you wanna confirm everything in the checkout, and we will create it. And there we have it. Thanks for watching. If you wanna learn more about AWS and use it in real life, hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.